When people develop an addiction, they go through a specific process of seeking resources to maintain it. The initial stage requires only disposable income within the bounds of reason as the person tries to have a hobby. The next phase is a change of lifestyle as bills fall behind and cars are repossessed so that more resources are reallocated to support the preoccupation. In the third phase, any drop of available wealth is squeezed out of remaining options. Living room sofas are shaken down for loose change and closets are pilfered for keepsakes that can be pawned. In the final stage, when all else has been exhausted, the person abandons all sense of decency to pilfer anywhere and everywhere. In other words, you can see a close correlation between desire for the product and finding ways to get it. This is yet another psychological pattern that rapturism matches to a T. In rapturism, there is a direct correlation between desire for the product, as in the need to guess a day or time, and a willingness to shake down the proverbial sofas to look for clues. Many casual rapture watchers can stay in the hobby stage for a long time. They are mildly curious about knowing the general season we are in, and they may spend a few hours of their disposable time checking Watchmen updates. These people tend to be sticklers for Bible-based teaching. Back before the internet, when you had to recruit your followers the hard way, a date setter was mostly a flash in the pan who couldn't keep a large audience for very long. So obsessive watching was done in the shadows among those who were primarily already mentally unstable. YouTube has unfortunately been a game changer for this. Anyone who now has even a passing interest in rapture watching has access to hours and hours of daily content tailored to giving them hopium. No more leaving home to go to a Bible study group overseen by church leadership. No more reading books you barely understand. Now you have at your fingertips an unlimited supply of Watchmen content telling you exactly what you want to hear. That content can be seen as an addiction pipeline. People who may otherwise have lost interest in watching are now enticed by a friendly face who makes daily content. And this has put thousands of people in the addiction pipeline. They quickly move on to stage two, where watching is their preoccupation. More time and energy are spent on daily watching. But the thing of it is, you can't keep watching hours of content on the same old Bible verses you have wrung dry. So you need more fresh ideas to keep you excited. You lower your standard for what counts as evidence as the extrapolations grow increasingly tenuous. You're still technically sticking to the Bible, but now you talk of Galilean weddings and new moon Moedims and the Shunammite woman. And soon you're predicting the rapture on a corn moon based on something in Amos. Yes, it sounds ridiculous, but you console yourself with reassurances that this is all still Bible study. Time marches on and the Moedims add up to nothing and still your lust for knowledge continues. So now you shake down the sofa to see what you are missing. The entire Bible becomes a rapture manual as you shake it up and down for rapture clues anywhere. Any Bible passage on any topic in any context can be seen as a clue. And then you are babbling that Abishag is proof of pre-trib rapture typology. You have abandoned all pretense of objective study and are now just digging to make a narrative. But these tactics also ultimately fail. And after a while, the Bible itself is left sitting there as an empty husk you have completely hollowed out. The trail has gone cold. There are no more workable leads, but your lust remains. So you are driven to unbiblical sources. And now the game is to find secular resources that introduce new information that may have quasi-biblical implications. I mean, resources like Talmudic Jewish literature, the Daigle Report, predictive programming from rock music, etc. These are anti-Christian machinations to tell you what the Bible is apparently incapable of explaining to you. It's important to notice here that nobody gets into rapture watching to do this kind of stuff. People always start rapture watching with a naive assumption that it's all in the Bible. 
Beginners laugh at any suggestion of using godless rock stars to tell them when the rapture will be. But slowly over time, as that lust for knowledge continues to be fed and the Bible has been picked through until there's nothing left, the lust will drive you to look elsewhere. Even at this stage, you continue to reassure yourself that although this may not be in the Bible, it is still Bible adjacent. You are merely supplementing to fill in the blanks that the Bible doesn't mention. But this will ultimately fail you in the end as the rapture remains as elusive as ever. At this point, you have two choices. You can throw in the towel and accept the fact that there isn't an answer, or you can tell yourself that you will be the special chosen one destined to find it. You are special, elite, privileged, set apart to be different, and the rules don't apply to you. You have been chosen to enlighten us in this final generation. You will uncover esoteric knowledge that Satan has been hiding for all these years. And then before long, you are explaining to the rest of us how the Jews removed two centuries from their calendar to hide the fact that 2024 is the year of Esther because of an asteroid that passed over Virgo. Ergo, the rapture will happen in October. Now, you may look at this and say to yourself, that is ridiculous occultic hogwash that I will never do in rapture watching. That's what people always say when they first start watching. Thousands of rapturists who were raised to know better are embracing this. When a lust for knowledge is allowed to go unchecked, this is what it will become. Stay away from rapturism.